Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You and welcome to my kitchen. Do I have some amazing holiday desserts for you and we're using boxed cake mix to make them. It makes life so much easier to just go down that baking aisle and pick up a box of cake and have your measuring is done for you. So check out this episode and get some amazing new desserts that are going to be quick and simple for those holiday parties when you've just been to work and you got to rush out the door. These are the kind of desserts you want. Our first recipe is rum cake. It's absolutely amazing. I am using small little pans. Normally, I use the throwaway tins that you can get at the store and I just give them as a gift and they are a spectacular gift for your friends. But I didn't have those, so I'm using these pans. And what I'm doing, and this is actually the way the original recipe told me to do it, is grease my sheet. I'm putting some parchment paper in the bottom, that way they'll be easier to pop out because the bottom is actually going to become the top of your cake. We have a cup of nuts here. Now I'm going to sprinkle these nuts all on the bottom of my pants. So I'm just going to put a nice layer right on the bottom. Now it says a cup, but if you really want to add some extras, now is the time to really load up on your nuts. You can even put extra nuts in your batter if you would like. We may, we shall see. Normally I do six of these. I only have four, so I'm going to be doing one in this. Forgot about that. So I'm going to put some on the bottom there, and then we're not going to have enough to put any nuts in our cake, and that's okay. Our next step is we are just going to throw our cake mix in a bowl. This is so easy, guys. One package of vanilla pudding in a bowl. That makes it super moist. We're going to add three eggs. Let me beat these up a little bit. Why not do more of the work right now? Just kind of break them some. Okay. Got those all nice and beat up. I'm gonna put four eggs in. Did you know you should cook with your eggs at room temperature? I don't remember why, but when you're baking, your eggs should be room temperature when you're uh, assembling. Who knows why? They're just supposed to be. So I put in a half cup of milk, a half cup of oil, and then here we start our rum and a half cup of rum. Now I am using a dark spiced rum. You can use just a dark rum. You can even try one of those coconut rums. I bet that would be delicious to put a coconut rum in here or you can try the coconut lime. I mean, I'm really not a rum drinker, but I know there's a lot of flavors, so you can experiment, but I'm going traditional with a dark spiced rum. And then we are just gonna stir this up. That's how simple it was. Now at the end, we still have to drizzle some a glaze over this. So we have one more step, but as far as our measuring, we didn't have to measure any flour. We didn't have to measure any baking soda, nothing like that. No sugar. At this point, you don't have to do this. This is just where I always sway from a recipe. I'm going to put in a half teaspoon of cinnamon and a full teaspoon of vanilla and just amp these flavors up. I mean, I already have a spiced rum that's going to, that has some vanilla and probably cinnamon or something in it. I, I really don't know. Maybe I should take a little sip and see what it tastes like. got something in there. I mean, I taste some vanilla. Okay, so then I'm going to mix this all around and get the lumps out. About two minutes. Okay, I got to just try a little bit, right? I mean, we all do it, right? Very good. Now we are going to pour this deliciousness in our pans and we're gonna put it in the oven at 325 for one hour. Now 
Okay, these were in 45 minutes. Now we let them cool for an hour. We have melted one stick of butter into our pan. Now we are gonna add one cup of sugar and a quarter cup of water. And we are going to let this boil for five minutes. Our cakes have come out of the oven. Since I used the smaller pans and not just one big cake, it was 45 minutes, not one hour. So check on that. Now they came out beautifully. Look how easy that was getting out of the pan. Here's the problem. You want to serve it if you're serving it as a cake. If you're giving it away as a gift in the little tins that you throw away, you don't do this part. So when you cut it over, you don't want your cake to teeter-totter. So you're just going to cut that top layer off. Does that get destroyed? Does that get thrown away? I mean, oh my gosh, you're cutting like a whole piece of cake off there, or a whole slice. No, this is eaten. Mm. It's delicious. Oh, gotta get this in a little bit. And we're just trying to get it to where it won't teeter. And then you're gonna set it on your plate. Now, if you're giving these away, you'll set them on individual plates, you know, which I am, so why don't I do that? Why put them on a platter? I'm giving these away, so I'm gonna put them on, maybe a Christmas plate would be better than this, huh? My glaze is in the boiling stage, it's boiling for five minutes. And so that will be done. Oh, there it is. Let me just turn that off and take that off the stove. Actually, we'll just bring it over here. All right, we are done boiling here. Now what we are going to do, let me just move all this over. Ugh. Okay, so make believe this is a cute little Christmas plate. Christmas plates aren't even out yet. Poke a few holes in. And it's kind of hard to because your pecans are in there too. Now if you're using the tin, Instead of putting the pecans on the bottom, you want to put them on the top and then you're going to poke holes in the top and we're going to take our glaze that's kind of caramely now and we're going to add a half a cup of alcohol to that. And that really thinned it up. Now, oh, that smells good. Whew. That smells good and smells like alcohol. Now we are going to drizzle our mixture over our cake. Oh, wow. Mamma mia, that looks good. Wow, amazing. Now, these I'm actually gonna give away even though it's not Christmas. People are getting their Christmas presents early from me. All right, it's my turn to try. Oh man, it smells so good. Superb. Mwah. Absolutely superb. Your friends and family are gonna love you for giving them a rum cake. Now remember, the glaze on top, the alcohol is still in there. So remember that when you're giving it to little kids. Maybe they'll sleep better. Maybe this is how you get your kids to sleep better Christmas Eve. Hey, that works, right? <laughs> Thank you. We are going to put one 14 ounce can of pumpkin puree into a mixing bowl, not pumpkin pie filling. Crack two eggs into your bowl. Add one and a half cups evaporated milk, one and a third cups sugar, one tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice, and a half teaspoon of salt. I think I forgot salt and it still tasted delicious. Stir this all up until well mixed.
grease a 9 by 13 pan with some oil or spray it. Now here's the scary part. This is like in the 1980s when they did dump cakes. We are going to dump this pumpkin liquid mixture into our pan. You're thinking, what? Well, where's the cake mix come in? We are going to sprinkle that on top of that mixture. I know it's a little scary, but don't worry. Next, we are going to sprinkle with one and a quarter cups of chopped pecans. Oh, this is going to be so tasty. And then we're going to melt one cup of butter and we are going to pour that over the top. Very interesting, huh? This is totally a retro cake. You are going to love it. You are going to bake this cake at 350 for 50 to 60 minutes and then you're going to let it cool for one hour before you dig into it. I guarantee you, you are going to love this and you can top with ice cream or whipped cream. Yum! We are going to put one and a half cups of mashed ripe bananas into a bowl. That's about three or four large bananas. To the bananas, you're going to add four ounces of softened cream cheese, one white or yellow cake mix. You can even use a spice cake here. That would be tasty. And also one egg. And you're going to stir this all up until the lumps are out. I'm using a mixer here because that cream cheese, even softened, is hard to mix in. So I would definitely use some sort of mixer here to help you out. We are adding one and a half cups of fresh cranberries. Yes, I said fresh tart cranberries. This banana bread is tart. Now the sweeter your bananas, that will help you out with the tartness. But this is for the tart at heart. Ha! Did you get that? You could also use some dried cranberries here if you're afraid with the fresh, but the fresh are tasty. You can use two eight and a half by four and a half inch loaf pans, or you can do what I'm using and use the throwaways and give them away as gifts. These are the smaller pans, about two inches by four inches. Please grease your pans ahead of time. We are gonna bake these at 350 degrees, the big loaf pans from 45 to 50 minutes. The smaller ones, I'd start checking at 30 minutes to see if they're done. Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks For You. Please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. I'd love to hear more from you. Also, I took that rum cake to a party last night and devoured, not one piece left. I made it in a bundt pan and it was so beautiful. Definitely give that one a try.